Okay. So next, this is what this is what I'm I'm rubbing my hands together because I've been excited about this. Pratik <laughs> is going to take us through his review of the new Affinity Photo software. So for those of you who don't know what Affinity is, uh, about two weeks ago, this really blew up. This is a beta software, which is supposed to compete with Photoshop. And based on their very, very flashy video that they put together that shows what it's possible that it can do, it's very, very easy to get excited about something like this. And I also think that people want to be excited about this because they don't want Adobe to be the only player in the game. Right now you have basically Adobe and GIMP and nobody wants to use GIMP. (laughs) Um, And... As a, as a software, Adobe is just really, really ahead of the game to the point where, like, I mean, Aperture dropped out, what, what was it, last they year? They did. Um, it was, yeah, I think they released the news either last year or seemingly maybe eight months ago or something along those lines, and um, I think everyone's trying to look for either alternatives or something to make their life a little bit easier. Yeah, and I, I think that really stems from Adobe's choice to going to the monthly subscription model rather than being able to purchase it. That's outright. right. A lot of people are really, really fired up about that. I'm not one of them. I don't care that much. But it's <laughs> been like the genuine, genuine, general sentiment that they suck because of that. And I don't know. But yeah. that's why Affinity is getting all these hurrahs because they want this option. So Pratik, walk us through what you liked, what you didn't like, everything you Excellent. noticed. Yeah, so, you know, going back on the subscription model, I think Affinity came at the right time because, as you mentioned, there were a lot of people that uh, cared the, about the fact that you had to rent the software by paying, you know, nine ninety nine a month or whatever subscription plan you have. And with Affinity, with them being free or, you know, eventually you'd have to purchase the software for, I think it's $50 uh, once it comes out of beta. Um, it gives people that power back to own a piece of software where you don't have to rent monthly. And um, they're tapping into that market. Now, I was kind of skeptical when I heard the news about Affinity because I wasn't sure if it was powerful enough, but everyone that I had talked to with, when they downloaded the beta said that it was pretty powerful and it was legitimate. Um, I was intrigued. So I took a look at it, and I was able to run through some images, see the pros and cons of how it operated, and is it something viable that could replace Photoshop? Mm-hmm. Um, and the answer was maybe. Actually, and I'll show you why. So um, I'm going to load up Affinity. And what we're going to do is basically take a look at an image um, as we run through it. So I'll load up an image right now. And the cool thing, first and foremost, about Affinity is the layout is very similar to Photoshop, where everything looks very similar. So you're able to get a sense of how it operates right away without having to learn or read a lot about it. So a lot of programs as you know, are daunting because they have a lot of options. And with a lot of options comes the time that you need to spend learning everything before you jump into it. The power that Affinity has is the fact that you're able to jump in right away just because you've been used to Photoshop. So for me personally, when I loaded up Affinity, it took me about 10 minutes to get familiarized with all the layouts just because I was used to Photoshop. And it made it so seamless. I think the main concern I have is how does a company like this get away with having a program that's so similar to Photoshop without being sued? Mm -hmm. Or how do they mirror everything exactly to the point where they're not worried about Adobe coming after them? I don't know what kind of legalities they are related to software development, but that was kind of something that raised my concern. Um, So here I have Affinity loaded on my computer, and what I'm going to do is open up a RAW file to show you kind of how it looks in comparison to Camera Raw or um, another program. So you're able to go to File, Open, or Open Recent, and it gives you the option to basically pick any file that's in raw format. Now, it doesn't load medium format files or things like that yet from what I have experienced. So there is an issue with compatibility. So say you are a photographer that shoots in a format that you would need Photoshop for, then you would have to convert the file before bringing it into Affinity, which kind of defeats the purpose of having a program all together. Now, on my screen, I've loaded Affinity, um, and I've opened up uh, one of the raw files that you kindly sent over, Jaren. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and... <laughs> so the first thing that I got stuck on was in Photoshop, typically you have something which is the camera raw editor. It's very distinct from Photoshop, where a window pops up, and you can see that you're able to adjust the settings 
in your raw file. With Affinity, it doesn't have a separate window. It loads right into the program as if you're going to start retouching it directly. And that kind of throws people into a little loop. So the good thing is that it's all consolidated, but the bad thing is that it's a little bit confusing. And you're not really sure that it's the raw file just yet. You think it's kind of uh, uh, a copy of the raw file that just opened directly into the program. Um, so you have to understand that you must um, be aware that there's a distinction between the raw editor and the actual, um, what do you call it, the program itself. So, so, even, first, so even though you're in, it looks like you're in editing the photo, but really you're still in the raw editor. You have to finish editing raw and hit like complete somewhere? Exactly. So on the top left corner, there's a button that says commit, and mm. it's not very obvious. So in the top left corner, um, you must commit to all your changes before you go and start modifying the image at pixel level, so to speak. Um, so here I've opened up one of my raw pictures, and on the right-hand side of the program, you can see all the options that you have. So starting from the top, you have white balance, exposure, black point, contrast, shadows, highlights, clarity and vibrance. So I think one of the biggest downsides to this program was when you click on, say, white balance and you start modifying the white balance left or right, it doesn't give you the exact temperature of the white balance. It just gives you percentages. So if you push the white balance to the left, it says, say, minus 20% instead of a Kelvin, which hmm. can be non It's not precise comparatively to what you're used to. And if you're like me, that I need to know specific white balance, um, it's not as obvious. So that's an issue. The second issue is that it's very similar throughout all the other options. So even exposure doesn't have numbers. It has percentages. And it's not really favorable to me, especially if you're used to knowing exactly uh, what exposure is supposed to be at or what white balance you're supposed to be at. So that's kind of the downside. The second issue that I noticed right away is some of the processing is very rudimentary. So say I come over to the highlights and shadows dialog box um, and I start pushing my shadows up, what happens is the shadow areas get really murky and they don't cooperate the same way that the shadow values would in, say, Photoshop. Because in Photoshop, when you modify or tweak the shadows and highlights, it's done in a way where the algorithm is responding to how the midtones are as well. And if you tweak your highlights, your mid your midtones should also be tweaked to a certain extent so you don't get um, any fringing on the borders. But with the algorithm here, what happens if you start tweaking your shadows and highlights, it starts looking very uh, mediocre. Mm. So you're not able to push your raw file to the point where you're used to uh, as you would in another raw processor. So I think they have a lot of tweaking to do. Now I think the good, the good side to this program is that if you want to start learning how to edit your photos, it is a pretty viable option. Or if you don't modify your raw file so much, which I've seen a lot of photographers just open the file and start working, then this might be an okay um, option for you. If you don't have the money to spend monthly. Hmm. Um, it makes it pretty reasonable. The other thing is I notice on options like Clarity, if you start modifying your Clarity slider, it's very similar to how Photoshop used to operate and how the algorithm was before. Um, in that with Clarity, there used to be a lot of haloing that would happen on an image when you start applying Clarity to the photo. Um, but they eventually fixed that problem with CS6 and CC. But with Affinity, there was still that issue where you got a lot of haloing happening um, across the image with clarity as well. Mm. So I can definitely tell that the algorithm is kind of, it needs updating, it needs support. But it's I think young. that's something that's... The, the, it's, exactly. it's a young program. I, this is not entirely unexpected. Um, yes. When, exactly. Once you got out of RAW and started actually getting in there, and when you have to do the, the real hardcore retouching, how are the, sure. how are the tools in there? So once I actually hit commit and brought the file into the actual program, it's funny. I'm having a hard time saying or not saying Photoshop because for every se every few seconds I say the name Affinity, I feel like I I want to say Photoshop and text. I'm so used to it. So that's one of those things that takes time to get used to. Uh, <laughs> there. So I think the coolest part is their layout is pretty slick. Um, on the right hand side, you have 
your basic adjustments, you have your histogram, you have your typical panels or palettes that you're used to seeing, which makes it really user-friendly and intuitive. Um, it, surprisingly, they had everything that I was, I was expecting in Photoshop. So for example, I can come here to my layers panel and I can set a new layer and I can set my brush, which is on the left-hand side where all the tools are, and I can select my healing brush. Now, the healing brush works pretty much exactly the same way that I would imagine um, using it in Photoshop as well, where you know you basically want to remove an item or object that you don't want there. And all the shortcut commands are basically the same as well, which makes it really easy to use. So if you're familiar with Photoshop shortcuts, you can dive right in and, and get used to it right away. So I think that's great. The other really cool part is the fact that uh, all their adjustments are stacked. So you're able to visually see what you want to do and get to it right away. So if you want to apply levels, you just click on the levels tab and it brings up an adjustment layer on top of any blank layer and so forth. So it makes it pretty straightforward. I mean, I didn't see anything that um, I was lacking. Mm -hmm. It had everything that I basically wanted um, as far as editing goes. And if your workflow is really clean with retouching, it has everything you'd be looking for, which is, I think, you know, fantastic. Uh, let's see what else. So what you're saying is, the is only... basically the thing that's holding it back is just the raw processor at this point. Exactly. It even has 16 and, uh, and bits. And algorithms. Well, that's, yeah. like, <laughs> that's, like, that's what I meant, though, the algorithms that are powering the raw processor. Yeah. How are, and, uh, like, how's the healing brush Does it, and the clone stamp? Are they all just, like, perfect? They do seem pretty much exactly what I was used to in Photoshop. You know, I tested it out and got to see how the flow and opacity was and stuff, and they had all the same settings, and it, it seemed to react the same way. Yeah, I didn't see a downside to using the clone brush or healing brush in comparison. I haven't done a full retouch on it, but from what I've been um, playing around with, it looked like it did a decent job. I think the... So, you know, some people also ask, why don't you just use GIMP because it has pretty much everything. Well, from the last I remember, I don't know if they've updated, but GIMP, I don't think, has 16-bit uh, processing. This one does. So if you come over here to document on the top panel, you can come to color format and change it to 16-bit as well or 8-bit CMYK. It has a lab mode in case, you know, you're used to working in lab. Um, yeah, I think it's great. It even has a frequency separation preset. So if people are used to using, you know, frequency separation, you can come in and um, basically apply that without knowing how to use that, which is fantastic. Yeah. Gimp's been able to use 16-bit processing since uh, May 2012, by the way. Oh, so it, it has? Can. Okay. Okay. So it shows how it did my Gimp processes have been. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no one's blaming you. I, I, I don't think I've ever you've ever opened GIMP or used it myself. So what Critique. you're saying, wait, go ahead, go ahead, Commander. Commander. Sorry. Um, I was actually going to ask is, could you, like you said, you could, you haven't done a full retouch in affinity yet. And I was wondering, could you see yourself like what is holding you back from uh, perhaps doing a full retouch? Like what hesitations, what reservations do you have that you see currently in affinity that they would need to kind of spruce up before you could actually, you know, make something to the equivalent of what you already do produce. To be honest, right now, nothing seems to be holding me back. I think what is holding me back is raw support. So say um, a camera comes out next month and I need it to be compatible. Typically, because of CC, what happens is they send over um, uh, their camera updated camera raw, which allows me to read raw files and so forth. But say you have um, Capture One or whatever processing program you use to... Uh, process your raw files and then export it into TIFF or PSD. It's completely viable to retouch a photo from scratch using this program. So there actually isn't any reservations. I think the other thing is just because of industry standard and the fact that most people are using Photoshop is why I'm, I stick to it. And just because of funding and support, knowing that with Photoshop, there's a lot more R&D money that goes into it. So, you know, say there's features that come out in the future, I am able to stay on top of it. 
So Affinity may be good right now, but say a year from now, they might not be as current as Photoshop will be. So one of the things I think I could probably compare this to is um, I used to be a graphic designer. And what we would get, uh, we would support from clients anything that you could do it in from Quark, if anyone is a graphic designer, if you remember Quark, to (laughs) InDesign. So (laughs) I think maybe what Affinity's first-hand goal would be is to be put on that list of supported platforms that people yes. would know how to use and based exactly. on your description it seems like they actually aren't too far from that no they aren't and it seems like they've done a really good job of getting user support because you know with all the attention that uh, they're getting in the media I uh, they do seem to have a potential to you know get a lot of Funding, I would say, not funding, but just a, a big support group or a user group that allows them to do it. Yeah, I mean, they certainly have the public, most a lot of the public, pulling for them. So I'm going to put you on the spot here. I didn't ask you to do this, but I'm going to ask you to do it right now. If you had to give this program a star yes. amount out of five stars, keep, keep, keeping in mind that it is indeed a beta, how many stars would Pratik give Affinity Photo? I'll definitely give them four stars. Solid Definitely. four. That's that's pretty good because that's generally that's like when I say a product uh, for me, almost no product is perfect. So no. I generally get a four star. Giving Affinity a four star for a beta. Yes. From Pratik. That's a big yeah. deal. The only thing that's actually holding me back is the fact that it sometimes does crash. So <laughs> okay, yeah. it's a beta. So does Photoshop. What are you trying to say? Yeah, I mean Premiere. I, Premiere crashes on me pretty regularly now. I want. Yeah, I need. Consistent. So far, Photoshop hasn't really crashed on me that much, so I've been really lucky. I'm going to count my blessings. Knock on some wood there, Pratik. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to knock on all the wood. (laughs) (laughs) All right, cool. Thank you, Pratik, for walking us through that. Um, We appreciate it. So, uh, as if you one more time, four stars out of five. Yeah, my pleasure. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to email me at solstice retouch at gmail.com, and I'll be happy to answer them as much as I can.